So, the Internet of Things. Who loves the Internet? If you didn't put your hand up, get out. Um, <laughs> if you haven't used Google at work to do your job better, then you're wrong. Um, and who loves things? The chairs you're sitting in, the glasses you're wearing, the phones you hold. Pretty much everyone, some weird people down here. Um, well, the Internet of Things, there's a lot to it, and I'm going to try and breeze through this in uh, seven minutes. But let's jump into it. Let's jump into what the Internet of Things, IoT, really is. Now, in a digital world, we can make everything talk to each other, right? We can make our phones talk to each other, we can make Facebook talk to each other, and in a physical world, not so much. This is where our lives and technological development has kind of stopped. But now, we are able to build a network, so multiple, of physical objects, your chair, your table, your lounge, those Tim Tams in the fridge, that are connected to the internet. If you don't know what the internet is and you're same weird people that said no, get out. Um, and you, it allows you to send, so you can create and transmit, receive, so that you can receive and interpret, and exchange data. Exchange data. You can have conversations with things around you. So IoT will allow multiple physical objects, like your Tim Tams, to be connected to the internet. They can send just how good Tim Tams are to other Tim Tams and to you. And they can receive just how many people want those damn Tim Tams. <laughs> and they can have a conversation with the other items in your fridge. So we're entering a very exciting time where we will have chairs, couches, pretty much everything that's in your home connected to the internet, or at least to have conversations with things around you. Now, it's still very ominous, right, even though we have a definition that I may or may not have gotten off uh, Urban Dictionary. But let's break it into four sections. Hardware. Little bits and pieces like this. The hardware is what actually allows us to connect digital items to physical objects. So I can put this on a door and it will tell me when that door opens. This is a dollar, by the way, a dollar. So we have hardware that senses things. We have data. Data actually starts to make sense of what all of this is, and it's the thing that we push around all the, all the time, every day, that we don't really think about. But, for example, this piece of hardware here creates ECG data. It tells me how fast my, uh, my heart is beating. Let's actually check that out right now. Yeah, okay, 110. Great. <laughs> and essentially, this has also changed over the last 10 years. We used to push data around in heavy, kind of standardised formats. We're seeing a lot of different ways of doing this now. We see JSON strings. Let's see you interpret that, Mikey. <laughs> J-S-O-N, yeah. Um, and now data is getting leaner. We can say more with less, OK? And data is becoming the universal language. Not English, not Chinese, not Auslan, but the universal language of things. And software, what do we do once we have that communication, once we have that piece of information? The software is what interprets it. It's what controls it. It's what analyzes it and allows it to do stuff. It's Facebook. It's your Instagram. It's the things that actually take pieces of data from these pieces of hardware and makes it do stuff that is valuable to you. And the last step without all of this you know, stuff is if it wasn't connected, it wouldn't mean anything. And connectivity over the last 10 years, we've seen go from cellular phones that were the size of bricks through to Wi-Fi to Ethernet to 2G, GSM, 4G, all these different acronyms that are awesome. Um, but essentially, it's gotten cheaper and it's gotten faster. This is an RF transmitter. This is $1.50. I can attach this to one of these sensors with this little bit in the middle, and I can start beaming information to other things around me with no ongoing cost, with electricity cost as much as one cent a month for one of these. And I can start to have a conversation in a language that is not English or Auslan but in data. And once we have all of these things connected and get it up to the cloud, like these things here, we can actually start to use them. The thing on the top left, I call them things because they're on the internet. The thing on the top left is a Bluetooth beacon. It's used for marking things. These are $4. I can place this on any object and use this as a proximity marker as well as an identifier. I can put this in my fridge so that I know when mum went inside and ate 16 of those Tim Tams. <laughs> And for $4, I can also put it outside and know when my girlfriend gets home that she got safely through the valley and into my apartment. 
On the bottom left is an air quality sensor. This is on the top end of the costly electronics, but that's a $6 sensor that allows me to tell, is there ammonia? Is there carbon dioxide or harmful gases in the environment around me? And in the middle, a galvanic skin response system. This allows me to measure the conductivity in my skin down to the micro level where I can know before my brain does that I'm stressed, that I've got adrenaline pumping, or that I'm on stage. And on the right, we have consumerized versions of these up to the $10 mark that allow anyone in their home to start building the systems I'm talking about out of the box using software that's readily available. And it's all in the wonderful cloud. We can do it anywhere. We can do it for ultra low cost. We don't have to worry about maintaining it. And you don't have to be an expert to use it. Now, you may or may not know that this already exists in your home. And if it doesn't, you should already have it. There's systems that allow us to walk up to our front door and not use a key, but purely to actually measure, is Jordan there? Has he walked up in a particular way? Is it him? And unlock the door for me. I can turn my TV on to Channel 7 and The Simpsons, just as I get home and I like to in the afternoon. I can actually measure how many people are in my room, what's the humidity, what's the temperature outside, and automatically set my air conditioning. I can talk to a unit and turn my Philips Hue lights on at the right time, to the right colour for my mood. And if I leave them on when I leave, it'll take care of it for me. So what does this all mean? Why is this big, uh, a big problem, right? Why, why does it present so many different opportunities? The thing is that now we have gotten to a point where this is such an available and realistic opportunity that it's going to explode. And it's only going to happen in 10 years. Who loves their job at the moment? Half of you are like, no. <laughs> Who thinks that they'll be in the same job for the next five years? Oh, you are all wrong. <laughs> Who thinks they'll be in the same job for 10 years? Even worse. We're entering a stage where everything will be connected, and the impact of IoT will be $11 trillion a year by 2025 across factories, cities, human identification and interaction, healthcare, work sites and general safety, offices and vehicles. And why now? Because of the ultra-low cost of this hardware, the high availability of resources, the low level of difficulty to compile them and put them together, and a highly digital and connected universe that is driving us towards not just connecting our digital space and our digital lives, but our physical space and the things we actually deal with every day. This is a vertical farm. The only human interaction needed is placing the seeds into the soil. Watering, trimming, harvesting is all taken care of by IoT systems. And Barcelona Smart City, over the last 10 years, has made one of the most IoT integrated smart cities in the world. By placing sensors that tell people where parking spots are, they have increased revenue for parking to 50, over $50 million per year. They've decreased their energy costs by $37 million a year purely by having IoT and lights to tell them when they actually need to turn on and when people are there to use them. Their smart gardens save them $58 million a year in water usage just by watering in the right places at the right time. And now think about your home. All of those things I mentioned in your house, I already do in mine. It's here. It's not a futuristic object or an idea. It's a reality. So as we welcome the whole universe to the next era of connectivity, I ask, once all of our tasks are automated, when the things that we currently do every day and the jobs that half of you love and half of you hate are actually replaced by IoT devices, artificial intelligence, and interconnected systems, what do we do? We come back to creativity, innovation, and humanity. We cannot replace our need to create new things, to improve them, and to build interpersonal relationships. We invent, we build, we optimize, we operate, we innovate, and we remember to enjoy sometimes before we invent again. IoT is the beginning of a new era. Thank you. <laughs>